like, share, subscribe. Hey y'all, welcome back. Number 51 says a rectangular box has volume x cubed minus 8 cubic inches. If the height of the box is x minus 2 inches, what, are, what is the area of the base of the box? And it even goes as far as to tell you that the volume of the box is equal to the area of the base times the height. So the area of the base here um, is what we're trying to find. Okay, the volume is x cubed minus 8, and the height is x minus 2. So there's two ways we could go about doing this, or I guess really there's three ways, although two will be very similar. So if I'm just thinking about this purely algebraically, the way to find the area of the base is to simply divide both sides by x minus 2. So I'd have x cubed minus 8 divided by x minus 2 equals b. Now, to divide these polynomials, we are going to have to use either long division or synthetic division, and I'll run through both of these options for you. There is still another little tricky way on how you can do this without doing the division, but let me at least show you how the division would work in case that's the <laughs> method that makes the most sense to you. So let's start with long division. I'm going to put x minus 2 on the outside of this long division bar, and on the inside I'll put the x cubed, but I'm going to make sure to account for all the missing degree to terms in between the cubic term and the constant term. So like 0x squared, 0x, and then the minus 8. Let me bring uh, this down just a little bit. Give myself a little room to work here. Okay, so the way that the long division works is you want to think to yourself and ask yourself, what do I need to multiply x by to make it x cubed? So you can just look at the first term here, the first term here, and try to figure out, okay, well, x times what is x cubed? Well, x times x squared is x cubed, so I'm going to write x squared up here. Now, I'm going to multiply, just like how you would do long division, like in elementary school. Um, it's really the same algorithm. Um, we're just applying it to polynomials here. But you're going to multiply this x squared by whatever you see here and write that product down here. Okay, so x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times negative 2 would be negative x uh, squared. Did I, what did I say? Negative 2x squared? I'm not sure if I said that right. Okay, so now, you know, that's x squared times this. Gave me this. Now what I need to do is I need to subtract um, these columns. I'm just going to subtract what I have up here by what's, what's here. So I'm going to write it like this. Okay, so x cubed minus x cubed is 0. Now that is intentional. That's what you're trying to make happen. You're basically trying to cancel out these leading terms until you get to the very end. Um, so yeah, so that's 0. 0 minus negative 2 x squared would be positive 2x squared. Whenever you subtract a negative, that does give you a positive value. Now, uh, the next step, in, and, and so we've done the subtraction, the next step here is we are going to bring down the next term. Okay, 0x. And repeat the process. And for long division, you'll just keep repeating this process until you've exhausted um, any, uh, uh, until you get to a point where um, what you have is the same degree as uh, what you started with here in the, uh, the divisor. So x squared times, I'm sorry, x times what is 2x squared? So I'm trying to think of like 2 times what would be 2x squared so that when I subtract, I'll make it equal 0. And so that would be 2x. 2x times x would be 2x squared. 2x times negative 2 would be negative 4x. And then I'm going to subtract again, just following the, the same few steps over and over again. Now when I subtract, 2x squared minus 2x squared is going to give me 0. That's, again, intentional. That's what we want to happen. 0 minus negative 4 is going to give me a positive 
for x. So once you have done the subtraction, then you bring down the next term, which in this case is our last term. So this will be the last step here. Minus 8. And so again, ask myself, x times what is 4x? And that would be 4. So 4 times x minus 2 would be 4x minus 8. When I do the subtraction, I get 0, which means there is no remainder. And as we should remember from elementary school, when you divide and you have no remainder, that means that your divisor is a factor of the dividend. So in other words, this divides evenly. There's no remainder. Okay, so we did the, the division here. Our quotient is what's written up here. Okay, so in other words, x cubed, let me, I'll move this over here, x cubed divided by x minus 2 is going to be x squared plus 2x plus 4. Um, so that's how you would do it using long division. You can also use something called synthetic division. Okay, and um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to like really break it down. If you want more information, I would recommend just Googling a little video, uh, you know, go to YouTube or something. Well, you're, you're already at YouTube, but uh, search for synthetic division you know, examples. I'm going to show you how to use synthetic division on this one, but I'm not really going to teach it step by step or anything. So this first method we did was called long division. Um, this next method we are going to use, let me uh, move all this out of the way, since we already got our answer here. And if all you're looking for is the answer, there you go, there's, there's the answer. But I do want to show you a couple of the ways on how you can get there, in case that long division is just too complicated for you. So yeah, so we got the long division method. So now let's try what's called synthetic division. So with synthetic division, it's really just a shorter way of dividing. Now there is one downside to synthetic division, even though it is a little faster, and that is that it only works if you're dividing um, a linear binomial. Luckily we are here, but if you're not, you have to kind of do some reconfiguring so that you got to manipulate your expression a little bit to be able to use it. So it's just one of those things that um, just be careful about using synthetic division. So um, to use synthetic division, we're going to write, first we're going to write 2 out here because we're dividing by x minus 2, and so the number that would make this equal 0 would be 2. So I'm going to put that there, and then I'm going to write all the coefficients of the numerator um, in a row up here, like kind of right by the 2, but on the inside of this little box thing I'm drawing. So um, if I look at the uh, x cubed minus 8 really broken out here, those are going to be the numbers 1, 0, 0, negative 8 that I'm going to write. So 1, 0, 0, negative 8. And the way synthetic division works is you're going to bring down this first term, 1. So whatever that number is, you're going to write that here. And then we're going to go through a, a, you know, a couple of steps here and, and repeat those steps until we get to the end. So here are the steps. We're going to multiply 1 times 2 to get 2. Then we add the column. 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So again, we're going to multiply whatever we got down here by this 2. And then 0 plus 4 is going to be 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So I'm just repeating those same steps over and over again. 8 plus negative 8 is going to be 0, and then we're done. Okay, so this last number is going to be the remainder. Notice we got 0 remainder in both of these cases. And then each one of these numbers represents the coefficient of the um, quotient. So each of these represents a term in decreasing degrees. So this would be like 1x squared plus 2x plus 4. We don't need to write the 1 here. And so we get our quotient as x squared plus 2x plus 4. 
I know I'm really kind of going through this quickly, I'm not really doing a deep dive into synthetic division. Again, if you want more details about this, just find, a, you know, there's tons of good videos out there that explain synthetic division, you know, Khan Academy, or I'm sure I've got a video out there somewhere too. Lots of other good ones. Um, but yeah, so that's how synthetic division would work. Now, there's one other sort of cheap way of getting here. I mean, we call it cheap, but uh, if you happen to know how to factor a difference of cubes and you recognize this as a difference of cubes, you can kind of bypass the division altogether. So it's kind of like factoring out a, uh, a difference of squares, except it's the rule for factoring uh, difference of cubes. And so to factor difference of cubes, like let's say we had a cubed minus b cubed, um, the factors would be um, a uh, minus b times, I'm going to run out of room here, so uh, make this a little smaller maybe, if we can still read it, uh, times a squared plus ah, um, uh, ab plus b squared. Right, so this is going to be how a difference of cubes always factors. So if you have something like x cubed minus 8, the a in this case would be x, and the b in this case would be the cube root of 8, which would be 2. So you'd have x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 2 squared, which would be 4. And so um, the volume here, which is x cubed minus 8, equals the height, x minus 2, times the base area, which you can see is right here. So these are three different ways on how you can get that answer. Um, and you just pick whichever one you feel the most comfortable with. If you can memorize the difference of cubes, that's great. That would be the fastest way. Um, now, as far as division goes, Synthetic division is a little faster if you, if you know the, the algorithm. Um, long division does take a little bit longer, go figure. Uh, but the nice thing about long division is that you can apply it to polynomials of any size, where with synthetic division, you really can only divide here if your, your divisor is um, a linear polynomial with a leading coefficient of 1. So it's a little limited in its use. There are ways how you can kind of manipulate it around to use it for other polynomials, um, but, it, but really at that point you might as well just use long division. So um, that was a pretty deep dive into number 51. We could talk about these different cases uh, a lot more, but I think we've kind of exhausted what we need to talk about here. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and you'll have a good day.